Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a brand new QNAP NAS. Now they are words that I've said quite a few times this year but this is a device that once I saw the spec sheets and when I saw the information behind it really really blew me away. Of all the devices that QNAP have put out there in their desktop series this new series known as the 88X that is also going to be moving into rack mount devices as well by the looks of things is definitely something of a game changer it takes a lot of what we know about their triple tier system of hard drives via sata sata ssds and nvme and then backs it up with some serious hardware behind it i want to talk about the tvs keyword there tvs h 1288x and the tvs h 1688x that's right this is both an 8 bay technically 12 bay and a 12 bay, technically 16 bay. These two devices are huge, both internally and externally, and are bringing a lot of hardware to the table. On top of that, they are 10 GBE enabled, and on top of that, they are ZFS. You see the H there? They are part of the QUTS Hero ZFS file system. So again, you have got um, the data coalescing, you have got uh, compression, you have got deduplication, you have got fast RAID rebuilding, fast RAID resilvering, all of that, those benefits brought to the table, along with things like triple parity in RAID Z. And you may have already noticed, and I alluded to it, the V in the title there. This is video enabled, which we'll get onto later on. But these two NASes from QNAP, hopefully coming before the end of the year, because they do sound very, very interesting indeed, are power NASes. Now, whether these are to replace the 82 series, I'm not 100% certain. The TVS 1282, 682 and 882 were some of the most powerful NAS I've seen for a very long time. Plus, they were also Intel Core. They were some of the last Intel uh, Core i3, i5 and i7 based NASes out there with only XT series left. What does this bring to the table if it's a, a powerful NAS that's graphically enabled? Well, Again, this is probably one of the first times I've said this on the channel. This is a Xeon-powered series of NASes that are video-enabled as well. These are some, some of the lesser-seen Xeon processors in NAS that do actually have embedded graphics. They are the W1250 series, and they come in a 6-core variant, arriving at 3.3 gigahertz per core. They can be burst up to 4.7 gigahertz per core. Six cores with a, you know, a real groundbreaking amount of uh, clock speed there built into it. And now this CPU does rank over 15,000 on CPU benchmark. That's 15,077 at time of recording. And this CPU also has UHD P630 graphics inside, which across the board, if you look at the website 3D benchmark, it completely trounces what we've seen before from UHD graphics and is on par with the likes of Intel Core that we've seen as well. This is a very, very competent and very, I would say a very mature choice of CPU here because I was hoping to see maybe an eighth or ninth gen um, I, uh, Intel Core based processor here, but I am definitely not gonna argue with this Xeon. This is a very, very powerful processor and this system brings a lot to the table. Now. With this, you've got DDR4 um, ECC memory with either 16 or 32 gig, depending on whether you go for the 8 slash 12 bay or the 12 slash 16 bay. On top of that, both of them arrive with 10 GBE on board. They've both got two 10 GBE ports on the rear there, which is exceedingly advantageous. The device arriving with 10 GBE, but not just 10 GBE over those two ports, link aggregation possible up to 20. There's also four, two and a half, uh, gig so 2.5 GBE ports as well. So again, none of your one GBE here. This is a plus gigabit system in numerous ways. It's also got three upgrade slots over PCIe, but one of the slots is taken up with that 2.10 GBE card. And the system arrives with six USB ports on it, all of them USB 3.1 Gen 2 10 gigabits, with four of them being A and two of them being USB C. It's a 550 watt PSU device as well, both the 16 and the 12 bay. So both of them will support, thanks to their PCIe uh, upgradability and that CPU and that um, power supplier, a small range of graphics cards as well. And again, something I've talked about with QNAP before about the range of graphics cards that are available. 
still not a huge list and a lot of that's due to as they say physical size and compatibility there's a few remnants uh, that we've seen from this kind of chassis of devices from previous generations uh, the LCD panel there on the front of the device, the rear of the device, has got um, speakers built in and audio in and out sockets, which again, I always kind of liked. I know I might have been in the in the minority there, but I did genuinely like it. But let's be honest, what makes this device particularly interesting to business users, photo video editors, content creators, post-reduction, that kind of thing, or VM users, or even, you know, core flash station users is this device it has got that triple storage system in place so in both devices you have either eight or 12 hard drive bays each of them sata based supporting up to the very latest 18 tb and indeed on the horizon 20 terabyte hard drives there in the nas world so you got iron wolf um, at the moment being the only ones that currently provide that along with some data center class drives in exos and WD Gold, I think HGS, um, the Ultrastar series as well. On top of that, you have four 15mm SATA-based SSD bays, which means you can introduce some of those larger SSDs. Now, you can go with either, you know, the standard commercial limits at the moment in terms of NAND are around 4 to 8 um, TB in that sort of scale of SATA SSD, but you can get custom made ones that are even bigger. And finally, inside you have got two NVMe PCIe uh, 3x4 bays for further SSD implementation. Now, bear in mind, they can be used for caching in this triple tier storage system. We're using Q-tier or just traditional caching, but you can also use each of these layers for raw access for editing and giving priority to different users and creating a perfect storage system along with zfs inside make this an incredibly desirable range and particularly in desktop form between these two if there ever was a follow-up to the thunderbolt series of 82 teen let's face it there almost certainly will be i would like to think that these are the basis of that these are incredibly innovative devices and very very interesting moving forward you know from this what are we looking at availability and price wise although availability hasn't been confirmed given how much we know right now uh, still in 2020 I'd say that these are looking at a relatively near release at least at the time of recording in terms of pricing I'm kind of getting whispers that they are arriving with the 8 bay at somewhere around the 2000 mark, so somewhere between two to maybe 2300, and the 12 bay arriving at over two and a half thousand. And of course, that doesn't include your local tax where you're based either. So the pricing of these is going to be quite, uh, it seems quite high, but you've got to take into context that incredible CPU, that huge amount of fast ECC memory, and if it's a great upgradability to a total 128 gig. 10 GBE on board, 2.5 GBE on board, and HDMI as well. It's an HDMI-enabled NAS. This is a Xeon-powered multi-tier storage system with a huge amount of utility to a number of users out there. And the fact that it's going Xeon but still going graphical has to be admired. And, you know, I don't think you're going to find better than this in terms of a middle ground for your budget, particularly if you're a business user the want to buy and not have to think about it later on these two systems are a good way to go and they both arrive with three years of manufacturer's warranty if you want to learn more about these devices do go to the links in the description both to myself at nas compares and our full breakdown of these devices and of course to span.com if you want to learn more click like if you want to um, let me know what you think to go into the comments and if you've got any ideas about future videos do let me know because I am looking forward to seeing what these two are going to compare against and I'll be interested to know what you guys think. Click subscribe to stay tuned in the future videos and I will see you next time.